grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We gather on this Holy Trinity Sunday to ponder and contemplate the mystery of our triune God. We offer our words of gratitude to Jeff Hand and Nicholas Hand as they lead us in worship today, as well as to Jackie Murphy, who is providing her musical talents for the hymns we sing together. Especially today, we welcome our guest preacher, Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. She has blessed all congregations with her video sermon today, and it is a blessing to have her with us. As we gather together, let us be church today. As church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. As church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatment within the call process, inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial se segregation, divestment from black communities and congregations, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure, failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions, actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. The opening hymn for today is hymn number 413 out of the ELW, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. At the beginning of time, God the Creator, God the Powerful Word, and God the Life-Giving Spirit formed the earth and all its inhabitants. God sees that all this created work is good and then rests on the seventh day. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a, wine, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome that separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth the vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree within the seed its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air 
and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8 will be spoken alternatively. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens of, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Paul closes a challenging letter to the Corinthians with an appeal to Christian fellowship, grounded in the triune harmony of Christ's grace, God's love, and the Spirit's partnership. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? 
Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. 
the crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet. Hymn of the day is hymn number 735, Mother and God, You Gave Me Birth.
of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of our sins. Amen. We are called into unity with one another, yet especially this week our nation is experiencing painful and profound disunity. Let us preface our prayers this morning with several minutes of silence, meditating on the sorrows of our country, its history of racial injustice, and its resistance in bringing about liberty and equality for all. Held together in mystery and held together in the mystery and mercy of the triune God, let us join with one another to pray for the many needs of the world. O triune God, bless the preaching and reception of your word, and pour your spirit onto congregational leaders and all the baptized. Give wisdom and stamina to those who work in national church offices for their unprecedented tasks. Hold the churches of all denominations together in one, as you are one. Holy One, Holy Three, for the church we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Triune God, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good, and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Holy One, Holy Three, for the earth we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O triune God, in whom three are one, guide with your powerful mercy our troubled nation, where relationships are fractured and injustice marks the land. Heal our wounded people, give hope to the despairing, protect the protesters, Preserve our cities from tumult and keep away those intent on destruction. Guard stores and homes from fire and save us from bloodshed. Control our police and National Guard as they stand against violence. Assist our president, our governors, and our legislators in moving forward from a history of racism into a future of peace. Holy One, Holy Three, for our nation we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Triune God, bless the Aboriginal peoples in lands around the globe. We commemorate before you today Chief Seattle, and we ask you to protect the native peoples of this land from yet more dangers. 
from outside aggression, and from internal despair. Holy One, Holy Three, for all tribes and clans we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Triune God, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss, especially Max, Susan, Gary, Rhonda Lee, Deanna, Pat, Rachel, Diane, Lee, Joshua, Sarah, Connie, Marsha, Robert, Joy, Mark, John, Colleen, Jacob, Deb, and the family of Harold Messner, father of Marty Mars, who passed away peacefully on Saturday, May 30th. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. We also remember our Stephen Ministry care receivers and caregivers, as well as those in need of Stephen Ministry care. Grant them peace and solace. Holy One, Holy Three, for all in need we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Triune God, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Holy One, Holy Three, for connections and relationships, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, bring us into the mystery of your triune life. We praise you as life giver, pain bearer, mercy maker. Accept now the petitions of our own hearts. Holy One, Holy Three, for ourselves we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Triune God, we praise you for all the saints who, in the past and the present, have lived and died in you. At the end, bring us all into the tender power of your presence. Holy One, Holy Three, for now and forever, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these words, O God, and receive also those petitions that are too deep for words, joining our prayers with those of Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us and taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace, bless us now and forever. Amen. The sending hymn for today is hymn number 414, Holy God, We Praise Your Name.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.